What's up everybody, Seismic PE Prep, example number 12. Let's get right into it. The south wall of a one-story commercial building in San Francisco is shown in elevation with the given loading. So that's the one all the way up top there. The building has a rigid roof diaphragm and is adequately anchored to the walls. The shear walls are of identical construction and the steel frames are identical. Calculate the load to each of the shear walls and steel frames based on the information provided. Uh, we have, let's see, what do I wanna go here? I got a couple uh, colors here. I got red for some dimensions and some additional info. Blue, I have loading criteria. Uh, so our sum of our wall lateral load is 120 kips all the way at the top there. And then we have a one, kip load for our two vertical lateral systems that we'll talk about here in a moment. Green, we have showing some displacement of those two systems. Again, we'll talk about that in a moment. We'll, we'll go white here. So we have one shear wall, two shear walls. So the shear walls are that extent there and this extent here. I didn't love how the problem drew this out. It looked a little funky to me. And then these X's that you see above, they are not braced frames or you know tension tie brace frame, they actually depict openings. And then we have our one steel frame, two steel frame, and our third steel frame. And those frames are, for the sake of this problem, part of our vertical lateral system. So there's some type of uh, moment resisting frames, whether they're ordinary, intermediate, or special. This problem, it doesn't really matter. Uh, high level, we remember that, okay, we have a rigid diaphragm system, which means that load distribution to our vertical lateral elements, the frames and the shear walls, are dependent upon the stiffness of each of those systems. And then when we talk about relative rigidity between the systems, basically we can kind of strip out a lot of additional calculations and we can simply relate the two systems to one another to get a percentage of load distribution to each to solve our problem. And when we are able to do that, we need two things. A force being applied to our two vertical lateral systems, in this case, our steel frame, and then our, oh, going out of, out of focus here, and then our shear wall. So we have a one kip uh, reaction, theoretical, applied to each one of those systems. And then the problem gives us a resultant displacement. What that will get us is a force over displacement which equals our rigidity or our stiffness of our system. We'll use this to relate the two together to get a final solution. Uh, we talked about above that we have two walls. So let's just mark that here. Rigidity is gonna equal force over displacement. For that sake, we have a one kip reaction. The displacement from that one kip, they gave as uh, 0.1 inches. So simply put, we just solve for this and this will get us, let's go R sub W for rigidity of our walls. That gets us a value of 10 kips per inch. Different ways to look at this when you're kind of internalizing this as an engineer. You can say under one kip of load, the wall moves 0.1 inches, obviously. Or another way you can think about that in your mind is it takes 10 kips of force to move the wall one inch. Oftentimes you kind of flip between the two depending on what type of engineer you are. If you like to keep the force as a unit of one, or if you like to keep the displacement as a unit of one, that's just kind of how you ping pong back and forth. And then we have our frames. So we have three frames. We'll go rigidity uh, sub F for frame, and we'll take our info from here. Again, one kip applied to a singular frame, and the resultant displacement is one inch. So a lot more movement under the same amount of load as the shear wall, which high level indicates that that is a less stiff system, or in the inverse of that, you can say it is a more flexible system. Also, that makes sense. Frames, uh, moment frames particularly, are almost always more flexible than a shear wall. I mean, I don't even know if you can, I guess you can make a really flimsy shear wall and you can make a really, really, really stout moment frame and get the stiffnesses to uh, work out where the, the frame is more stiff than the wall, but in almost, all common building designs, your shear wall is really the most stiff vertical lateral system that you can choose as an engineer. And your moment frames are almost the most or the least stiff systems that you could choose. So that makes sense. Now, since we're going to relate the relative rigidities between the two systems and then get a percentage of load to each of the systems, to do that, we need the, uh, the cumulative rigidity of the entire wall line that we're analyzing. So, up above here, 
that's where we're gonna combine everything. We have three frames and two shear walls. We'll call this R uh, T for uh, the total rigidity of the wall line. Two times 10, because that's uh, two shear walls and the rigidity of each shear wall, plus three frames and the rigidity of each frame. That is gonna equal 23 kips per inch for the whole wall line. Our total force, that's our lateral force. So that's this over here, 120 kips. So now the question is, well, how much force goes to uh, one of the shear walls and how much force goes to one of the frames? Well, we can do this by simply taking the uh, relative stiffness of one of our vertical lateral elements. Since we're doing the shear wall first, we know that that is 10 for a singular wall over the summation of the total stiffness of the wall line, which we calculated R sub T as 23 kips per inch. That right there is just a fraction, which means that's just going to break down your total load uh, and grab a percentage of that load and apply it to that wall based on its stiffness. So we just take that and then we multiply it by our total wall line force. 52.17 kips. Well, one of our frames we know is one kip per inch. And you'll see, I didn't mention this above, once we divide, divide, these units go away. So this becomes unitless. And then you're just left with kips. You're just left with kips. So all that checks out there. You can always kind of back check yourself to make sure that you're not running astray here. So you can see a significantly smaller uh, fraction, decimal percentage, however you want to look at it, because the stiffness of one of these frames is is not a lot. So not a lot of load is going to go to it. And the math shows that gets us 5.217 kips. And when you think about it, you're just sliding the decimal over one because it's 10 versus one, but you don't need to be thinking like that for the exam. All right, so you see just high level. I mean, all right, well, let's go up because you're like, well, that's the answer, what's the answer? All right, we'll go to the answer. So shear walls, frames, uh, it's looking like D, I would say is my go-to answer for this one. 52 for each shear wall, 5.2 for each frame. You could, again, if you had all the time in the world, you can back check and say, all right, well, the total sum, 120 kips, is gonna be distributed in some manner to all of these different systems. So if you go down here and you say, well, this is 52.17 kips per wall, there's two walls and there's three frames. If you sum those up together, uh, that should get you 120 kips. So you know you haven't forgotten about any load anywhere or done, done some error in distribution in some way. 50, uh, let's see, 52.17 times 119 Point nine nine one. I'm gonna call that. That's good enough for me. I'm ready to move on. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions on this and uh, I'd be happy to answer. Am I not clear enough? Am I not making sense? I wanna know those things. But hey, this is Rich with Team Kestova. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for interacting in any way that you have. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.